Hello everyone, I am Prashant S. Malgi, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics Engineering, Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. Today we will see functions and procedures in VHL. The learning outcome. At the end of the session, student will be able to write VHL functions and procedures. Let us first discuss the functions in VHL. So basically functions are used to describe frequently used sequential algorithms. So something which is repeatedly required, so instead of writing all those things whenever required, you can write those things as a function and wherever you need, you can call that particular function. So functions actually can return only a single value and that is through a return statement. Now let us first discuss the general form of function declaration. So this is how the function is declared. This is the keyword function, name of the function and this bracket will consist of formal parameter list then a return keyword, then return type, then is. So this return type specifies the uh, data type of the return value. Then if any declarations are there, those are to be declared, begin, then all the sequential statement, a part of a function body and name of the function. So this is the general form of a function. The only mode allowed for the parameters is mode in. So all these parameters, formal parameters, whatever you are specifying, all must be of type in. Only constants and signal objects can be passed as a parameters. So data objects which can be used as a pa formal parameter less can be either constants or signal objects. Now general form for a function call. So while calling a function, this is how it is called name of the function and then actual parameter list which you are passing to that particular function. So actual parameter list has to be given for calling a function. The number and type of a parameters which are specified in this actual parameter list, it must match to the formal parameter list while declaring in the function declaration. These parameters are treated as an input values. These are all input to a function. Parameter cannot be changed during the execution of the function. So whatever values you are passing to it, those cannot be changed in the execution of the function. Now let us consider one example of function. Say we want to implement this 4-bit adder. So if you look at here, this 4-bit parallel adder, a 4-bit number A and B, so consisting of 4 bits A0, A1, A2, A3 and B0, B1, B2, B3 added together by using this 4 full adders. This is full adder 0, 1, 2, 3. So the is LSB of both these is given to this and then with carry it is added some bit and this carry is progress it is given to the next full adder and so on. So this is how numbers a and b are added. Now to implement this let us write a function. So function add 4 a b these are the two parameters bit vector of 3 down to 0. Next another parameter is a carry which is of type bit and it returns a bit vector. Now we need some additional uh, variables. So variable c out bit, variable c in, uh, it is also bit and it is initialized to carry. So whatever carry you are passing to a function, uh, to that this c in is initialized. Then another variable sum uh, which we are going to return that is declared. So bit vector 4 down to 0 and this uh, is initialized to all zeros. 
So when you are adding two four bit numbers, the maximum result possible is five bits, and hence the sum is declared as a five bit bit vector. Now let us consider the implementation of the function. So loop one, this is a loop. It's a label for i in zero to three. Loop. See out. So this is basically the expression for carry and sum of full adder. For i in zero to three loop. So it means what? This particular loop will be executed for values of i which runs from zero to three. That is for i equal to zero, one, two, and three. Now, with i equal to zero, it will implement this particular full adder. So the carry output of this will be equal to a zero and b zero, or a i and c in, or c in and b zero. Now, as this c in is already an input carry initialized to, so that input carry along with a zero b zero. The value of C out is calculated, and some bit that is sum of zero will be equal to A of zero, X or B of zero, X or C in. So the sum zero will be calculated. Once this is done, this output carry must be given as an input to next. So for that, this C out will be assigned to C in. So that with I equal to one, this C in will be C out of the first full adder, and hence with I equal to one, now it will be A of one. And b of one or a of one and c in, but now in this case this c in will be because of this particular statement previously executed, the c out of the first full adder will be given as c in, and then or c in and b of one, so this will give you a carry output of the next adder, and some output will be a of one x or with b of one with c in. And this will give you a sum output. So this is with i equal to one, and same way it will be executed for i equal to two and i equal to three. Once this is done, so all the sum bits of s zero to s three are ready here. Only the final carry output will be actually the most significant bit of the sum, and hence this final c out will be assigned to Some four bit, and so this five bit sum will be ready, and now it is return with return sum. Okay, so this is how this function gives you addition of two four bit vectors. Now let us think on what will happen if add four function is called as below. Add four. X, another variable is say y, but not of y is taken and one. Pause the video for a minute and think on this. As you know, because of not y, it will complement the second out input. So basically, it gives you one's complement of y. And as This input carry is taken as one, so adding one's complement to one gives you a two's complement, and so if you are adding a two's complement to x, means basically this particular function is now actually implementing this. The z will represent that is z three down to zero will represent x minus y. The next is VHL procedures. VHL Procedures are actually useful for decomposition of VHDL code into different modules. Procedures actually can return any number of values using output parameters, not like a function where a function can return only a single value, but procedures can return multiple parameters by using output parameters. Now, general form of procedure is like this: general form procedure declaration, procedure name of the procedure. Once again, formal parameter list is there is no written declarations. Then begin and end will consist of all sequential statement. Remember, there is no written statement in a proce procedure because the procedure is returning the values through the 
parameters only. Some of these parameters are output parameters. And through those output parameter actually procedure returns the values. Now general form of uh, call is procedure name and actual parameter list. So the actual parameters are passed while calling a procedure. Procedure call is either a sequential or a concurrent segment. So when it is written inside the process it will become a sequential otherwise it is a concurrent. It is important to understand the type of uh, parameters which you can pass to a procedure. So the class mode and type of each parameter must be specified in the formal parameter list. The class of the parameter, the mode of the parameter and type. So here class means whether it is a signal or it is a variable or a constant. By default the class use is a constant. So if you are not specifying any class then that particular parameter will be treated as a constant. But if the class is either a signal or a variable then the actual parameter in the procedure must be a signal or a variable of a same type. Okay. So if the class is signal or variable in this list then when you are calling a func procedure then you must pass a signal or a variable of same type. But where a constant formal parameter the actual parameter can be any expression which evaluates to a constant of proper type. Constant formal parameter is always of mode in. Signals and variables can be of mode in, out or in out. Now let us consider an example of a procedure. This is a procedure for uh, adding two vectors. Now add 1 and add 2 these are in bit vectors. Now no class is uh, specified so they will be treated as constant. Seen in it is also bit. Then signal sum so sum is of type signal out mode of the sum is out and bit vector and signal C out out bit and one more parameter is n it is also an input parameter positive. So only the class is specified for these two sum and signal both are of output type. Now this is a variable C bit type begin C C in so whatever input carries there that is uh, given to C. Now once again uh, this is written as a loop now it is an for an n bit vector the loop will run from i equal to 0 to n minus 1. So for i in 0 to n minus 1 loop means these all statements will be executed for value of i from 0 to n minus 1. Now with 0 this will be sum of 0 xor of add 1 0 add 2 0 and c that is this input carry. Then the c will be equal to with i equal to 0 it will be add 1 0 and add 2 0 or add 1 0 and c or c and add 2 0. So at the first stage this sum 0 and c will be calculated. Now with i equal to 1 so this c will now go as an input to this particular statement so it will be used as a input to second stage. So sum of 1 will be add 1 of 1 xor add 2 of 1 xor c where c was the output carry of the previous. This is how it is implemented from 0 to n minus 1 and only the for last bit or the last carry this output carry is assigned to C out. So here in case of procedure there is no written statement whatever now here sum will be created because as it is an output parameter it is available wherever you are calling a procedure. So th this is how you can write the procedure. These are the references. Thank you.